Hey guys, Adam Andrews with AeroWorks Productions and the Swarm Network. And today we're out here to do a sample mapping mission. Now this is important in search and rescue because it, allow, it allows us to get a high definition image of the ground that we may be searching the search area. Now this is very uh, advantageous because full size aircraft, they, they can't always fly low enough. Sometimes they're looking out this window and they weren't looking out this window and so on. This allows us to fly over a search grid and if we don't actually see what we're looking for live on our monitors, we can go back and analyze that footage after the fact and hopefully find something that we're uh, looking for. Now today we're going to be covering the basic uh, equipment you're going to need and we're going to do a sample mission here and we're going to be looking for two lost hikers. Uh, it's getting cold out and uh, one of them could be injured. They haven't reported back on time so we need to get going and uh, get this mission started. So let's get going. And the first thing we're going to look at is our equipment here. Now you can see my equipment right now is in a backpack. This is nice when you're doing search and rescue operations because we can't, there's not always a parking lot at the, uh, the base camp of the, your search and rescue location. And this gives you the ability to either ride a mountain bike in, an ATV, put it on your pack, hike back in, and it's a lot easier to carry than say a hard shell case. Inside the pack, we're going to have all the basic necessities for this mapping mission. In this case, we're using a Phantom 3 professional drone. A very common drone right now. We have plenty of batteries. As you know with the Swarm Network, we need at least two hours of battery, either in battery quantity or the ability to charge on the fly for a total flight time of two hours. We have props. We have our cable for our mobile device. Extra cables is always good to have. And we have our transmitter. The other thing that we also have is plenty of memory cards. Now I have this in a, in a Nook case. You could you know, pick these up at a variety of different manufacturers. Plenty of uh, media storage and uh, the ability to hand that off to a search and rescue commander either on a USB stick or be ready to give up your SD card should you need to do that. So the first thing we'll want to do is grab a fully charged battery and get our aircraft assembled and ready for flight. All right, now we are going to be using uh, both the DJI Go app and the Drone Deploy app. Now the reason we use both is because we want to make sure before we launch the Drone Deploy app that all systems are go with our copter, meaning we have a formatted SD card, we have GPS, we're not getting any errors, and the aircraft is ready to fly. We can see that that's the case here. We have safe to fly, and I already formatted the card by going to the toolbar and formatting the SD card. I've already done that. So what you want to do now is back out of the Go app. You cannot have both apps running. And then we're going to launch the Drone Deploy app. Now, my mobile device, the iPad Mini, does not have cellular service. I'm actually using a mobile hotspot, a Wi-Fi hotspot that uses cell service. It's made by Karma. I'll put a link down in the description. And it allows us to get internet anywhere on the fly. Now you can see our map has now centered around the aircraft, which is positioned right here. This particular pond is the area that we want to search. So all I need to do is simply drag these corners to cover the pond area. And I can reshape that however I need to. Even if I want to make it a little bit different shape there, I can do that. Bring this in a little bit. And once I'm happy with the grid pattern, it will then give me a duration of flight time and a speed and an altitude. So again, altitude, if you're covering a large area, the higher you fly, the quicker the mission is going to complete. And because we had it set at 98 feet, I'm going to go ahead and raise that up just a smidge by going into the gear section here. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and change that altitude to 150 feet. And we'll say, okay. And you can see now our flight changed from about 15 minutes down to six minutes because we're flying higher and it requires less passes to do the mission. So we like the way everything looks. We have our duration. We know it's well within our battery life. We have our battery life at 96%. We're flying at an altitude of 151 feet and the aircraft is gonna be flying at 20 miles an hour to cover this mission in that altitude and that duration. Once we're happy with the mission, we're going to hit the check mark and it's going to confirm kind of the path that we're going to take as well as do some systems checks. 
Once we get it all green, we'll see a live image of our camera, which will tilt down once it climbs up to the working altitude of 150 feet, but initially it just starts off looking straight out. Once we're ready to start, we just simply hit the start button and we'll go ahead and launch the mission. All right, we've got our mission downloaded. We got our system checks, everything's checked out. All that's left to do is hit the green go button and the copter will fly the mission autonomously. Let's go ahead and get started. Now the copter will initially climb up to its working altitude, which is in this case was 150 feet. Once it gets to that altitude, it's going to fly to the furthest waypoint and then work its way back so that if we get low on battery, we'll be closer to us than further away uh, when the battery starts to run low. We are currently at 151 feet. It is now making its way to the furthest waypoint to begin the mission. And again, the mission is going to take about eight minutes to cover this area here. The camera is now facing straight down and we're on our way. As you can see here, the aircraft is moving along at 20 miles an hour, 151 feet, and these are the images that it's currently taking along its route. Now, if we don't see something on the live image, whether that be an external monitor on the images here, we're gonna be able to look at this data on a larger screen back at the command center, hopefully uh, take a look at the GPS coordinates of the image if we see something, and then send our ground search parties out to locate the missing parties. All right, the mission's been completed. The copter has come back automatically using return to home and is now commencing the landing. If for some reason your terrain is a little uneven, you may want to take over and manual fly it, or in some cases even hand catch it if you're an advanced user. I'm going to go ahead and manual fly it down and land it here. And the mission is complete. Now one of the quickest ways uh, to review your data is just by simply inserting your SD card into a computer or laptop and starting to review the images manually. This will do, uh, this is probably one of the quickest ways to get through and just sort through some of the images. Now in a preliminary review, I happen to notice that these three images here contained something interesting and that was that this particular image here, I noticed there was something out of the ordinary and knowing that we actually had uh, one of the missing persons description in the fact that they were wearing a red jacket, blue jeans, and white tennis shoes, this led me to believe that this may be one of the two subjects that we're actually looking for. So in looking through the three images that they appeared in, we happened to notice that there were two individuals crouched down under this tree. So, this is a quick and easy down and dirty way to get through your images quickly. Now again, all the images from the mapping mission are contained here. In our next step, we're going to go ahead and upload those to a map processing program, the same one that we used to launch the mission and we'll go ahead and process the data and stitch this, all of these photos together into one complete photo. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now to process the data, we're gonna to go to dronedeploy.com. We're gonna go ahead and click on the map engine. We're gonna name our map. In this case, we'll call it Swarm SAR, and we'll leave it terrain, and we're gonna go ahead and select our photos select our media card here and we'll just go ahead and select the whole bunch and we will hit choose okay you can already see here that drone deploy detects where all the images were shot 
and it tells us this is a 19 acre area, 682 megabytes, 142 images, and a full processing time would be 2.5 hours if you were gonna process this as a full high resolution map image. Um, we'll go ahead and start that process now. And it will start uploading the images. And there's a variety of ways that you can actually process this data. Uh, one is obviously running it through a map engine like Drone Deploy or Pix4D. There's a lot of other ones that are available online. All right, now that our image has actually been processed, there's the name we gave it. We can simply click on the map, and this will open up the image that we have imported. Now this is the area here. You can see that all the surrounding areas are basically a Google map type image. And we have this area that's now been processed. This area here, I believe we canceled the mission slightly earlier, early, so that's why we didn't get that. You'll see there's a slider here. If you slide this, you can actually see the difference between the current cached satellite map and then the images that we took today. You can slide that to see the difference. Now we can zoom down as the, as the map actually uh, processes and you'll see that the detail will slowly work its way in. Here it was our base camp and uh, this is where we were flying from. Those images that we found were right here. You can see there's some trees here. There was actually a dead tree there. And you can see that that's definitely somebody laying down there, possibly a second person here, maybe some bags. Um, so we can definitely use this to get the big picture. Another thing that we can do is actually go and do a 3D model and that will allow us to get kind of a different perspective on the surrounding areas. So let's take a look at that as well. All right now this gives us kind of a perspective, um, a 3D perspective. You can see that when we position the map down low that this is actually, there's actually quite a bit of a slope going down into where this lake is frozen. Again, here was the, uh, the base camp vehicle, and as we rotate around, we can see right in this area here where the two subjects were. And I kind of have to play with the map to get over there, but you get the point. This is also a nice way to show somebody who you may have to recreate something for. Um, this is very useful in accident scene investigation or you need to get the point of view of maybe the vehicle or another uh, person involved in the accident. Um, it allows you to, to put somebody in the same spot as the scene without having to actually go to the scene again. And you can actually get some pretty good detail um, just by creating a 3D model. All right, guys, well, I hope you found this video helpful and uh, point you in the right direction and get started in mapping. For other training videos, check out our AeroWorks Academy. We'll put a link down in the description. Also, be sure to check out the Swarm Network at sardrones.org. And if you're interested in becoming a member, please check out the requirements. And you can also check us out on Facebook at Search and Rescue Drones on Facebook. We'll put all the links down in the description. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.